Honestly, there is no Josh Charles cuter than clown dog Josh Charles. I absolutely love the movie Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. The name pretty much gives the plot away if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it is a 1991, what is called a cult classic. And oh my gosh, is it ever a cult classic. It is just one of my all time favorite movies. And I don't know what got it in my head, but I was like, you know what? I want to dress up as Sue Ellen Crandall. I feel like that is a makeup look, like a makeup Halloween look that I can attain. I am not a professional makeup artist. I am not someone that can like, you know, come up with some like really cool special effects makeup, but I felt like I could definitely find the thrift store shoulder pad jacket necessary to pull off a Sue Ellen Crandall look. And that is what you see in front of you. I am honestly so proud of this look. I think this is my favorite Halloween costume that I have ever put together. And I have had so much fun creating this look. So if you wanna see how I transform myself into Sue Ellen Crandall, just keep watching. All right, so I have my reference photos of Sue Ellen here. And in the movie, she basically has like a French twist thing kind of going on in the back that has like a bun on top. But I am not that skilled in updos. I can work an updo, but it's very difficult for me to like create an updo. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and I'm gonna use a sock bun because I think that a sock bun is gonna give the same effect in general and it's also way easier to do. I use this little guy right here. This is something that I got forever ago. Um, on Etsy and it just makes a sock bun. Like it's like a little sock bun maker. It's really makes a sock bun even easier than a sock bun is without it. That, that like triple chin I've got going on is so cool right now. All right, and then she has like two like longer pieces right by her ears. I have like little baby hairs there so I'm gonna have to really like search to get like a hair that is gonna like be able to do what hers is doing. Okay, there we go. And she has two, of course, cause it's the nineties, come on. There we go, I'm happy. So now I'm just gonna spray so that this updo stays an updo. I'm gonna kind of like smooth some of all this craziness that's going on. I was supposed to have a hair appointment this week and it didn't work out, so I'm going next week. So my hair is just like, it's a mess, but we're gonna make it work. So this movie came out in 1991. So obviously there wasn't like a lot of dewy foundation going on back there. That being said, I own like zero matte foundations at this point. I don't even know that I own a satin finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Tatcha the Liquid Soap Canvas Primer and I'm gonna put that all over. It's pore filling and I wouldn't say that it's like mattifying per se, but I think it's just gonna make the overall look a little less dewy uh, just because it is a pore filling primer. So that's kind of my method of attack here on the fact that this is definitely like a matte foundation look and I do not own matte foundations. So for foundation, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation. This is like the most satin-ish uh, foundation that I think I own other than the Rare Beauty, which I don't like and therefore don't want to use. <laughs> um, so the Light Wonder Foundation, I have found when I use it with a sponge, it's a little more like matte-ish than what I normally like. And when I say matte-ish, it's definitely not even matte. It's just really not dewy in my opinion when I put it on with a sponge. So that's what I'm gonna do. Also, it has like a light coverage, which is really good because obviously Sue Ellen is very young in this movie, as was Christina Applegate, younger than me. So <laughs> you can see like her skin through it. It's definitely like she had great skin. Oh, I miss the days of my skin being that great, but she has like a very light coverage. You can see like freckles and stuff under her makeup. And it's just, I mean, she's a teenager trying to pretend that she's older. So um, you can still see like the useful signs um, under her makeup. It's not like she's like done up in a way that is like just really unflattering. All right, next I'm gonna do brows. Okay, again, it's 1990. So we've got like some fluffy, 
definitely like wispy, fluffy brows going on, which is right up my alley. I love that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush my brows up and then I'm gonna take a like a brow marker or a brow pen. This is the brow pen from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I have to like get it going first or it doesn't work. So I'm gonna use this to kind of add some like extra strokes of hair on the inner corner of my brows because you can definitely see like some wispies going on with Sue Ellen's brows. So that's gonna be my like game of attack is to just like add some extra brow hairs to the middle here because definitely that was the thing in the very early 90s. I feel like the very early 90s was such a good time for makeup. I think it was probably the best period in the 90s for makeup. I'm also just going in and getting a few strokes to just fill in the outer parts of the brow. I don't want it like super filled in because I want to keep it wispy, but I just want to make sure that it's kind of like, you know, fuller, a little fuller than what it is naturally. I don't want to go unibrow here, but I do want there to be like a little more brow in here than is normal for me nowadays. All right, so to keep these like fluffed up, I'm gonna use the 24 hour brow center and I'm gonna go straight up. I'm not gonna do like any like to the side like I normally do. I'm just gonna like push my brows straight up all the way across so that they keep that like fluffier look. Honestly, this brow is so much better than this brow and it's like a little bit upsetting to me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on with my life. <laughs> it is what it is. There's always one brow that's better. For me, it's this one today. It's this one most days. All right, here we go for the eyes. I am going to prime my eyelids with some concealer. I'm just gonna use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and just get my eyelids primed. I'm gonna take a little bit of just translucent powder and put it on them as well so that I have a good, like very blendy base because I'm really only gonna use like two shadows here. So I'm gonna use the Natasha Denona Beba palette. I say that loosely because I'm really only using two shades for this look. I think I'm gonna be able to get away with two shades. Fingers crossed, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is take Tone. So Tone is like this neutral, almost like a rusty, like neutral mid-brown. It's, I don't know, it looks very 90s to me and it also seems to kind of match what she's got going on. Her eye look looks like she's just got like one kind of shadow um, all over and then another one to deepen out that outer V, just a very like classic eyeshadow look, which obviously would have been very popular <laughs> in 1991. So I'm gonna take this shade tone and I'm gonna put it um, from lash line up into my crease, like a transition color. It's just gonna be like an all over color, but I'm not gonna take it like all the way up into my brow bone or anything. I'm gonna take it higher than I normally do, but I'm still gonna leave like this part of my brow bone clean. I swatched so many shades trying to find like what looked like what she has on. I mean, it's so hard because obviously like these movies were not in like super <laughs> HD the way movies are now. So it was definitely like kind of hard to see. I had to like watch back this scene so many times to see if I was like getting the right tone down. I think I have it. I'm pretty sure that this is about as good as it's gonna get. So fingers crossed. So again, you can see like I'm going up pretty high because that's how her makeup looks. Ta-da! I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. So next I'm gonna take this shade buff from the same Biba palette. This is like the same tone as the first shade that we used, but it's matte and it's a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take that and I'm actually gonna mix it with cocoa, which is again, a similar tone, but just a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna mix those two shades together and I'm gonna take them along like my outer V and up into the crease to just kind of deepen it up and give myself that darker outer corner that she has going on. So I'm trying to get like a classic almond eye shape. I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit because I got a little messy, but that's totally okay. Just wanna like make sure you're doing kind of like that classic outer V that kind of elongates the eye a little bit and pulls it up. That's definitely what's going on here in this look. I 
All right, I'm now gonna clean this up a little bit, going in and using a little bit of concealer. I'm just gonna put a little bit at the outer corner and then a little bit on the inner corner. I don't want to do like something super bright under the eyes. That definitely doesn't match the uh, time period here, but I do want to look, you know, brighter under my eyes and a little more youthful because again, Sue Ellen is 17 and I'm 30. So yeah, I need a little bit of help here. So using this concealer just to like brighten up under the eye, but also clean up because I want this to be more like a classic kind of eye shape. And once I kind of have that, cleaned up a little bit, I'll go back in and kind of blend a little bit more just so that it looks softer and not like cut out because it's definitely not like a cut out kind of look. All right, I am happy with the shape of this eye. So now we're gonna go in with some liner. I'm just gonna use like a classic brown. I'm gonna line the upper lash line and then I'm gonna line my lower lash line and smudge it out a little bit with a pencil brush. I'm going in pretty messy with my liner on the top. I want it to be like a little bit smudgy. So again, I'm gonna take a pencil brush and once I put down the liner, I'm just gonna smudge it a little bit. Not like too much, but I just want it to be kind of soft. I want it to have a little bit of a smoke to it. All right, and I'm doing the same thing for the lower lash line. I'm just gonna keep the pencil really close to the lash line, like kind of get it in there without getting it on the waterline because she does not have anything on the waterline at all. I just wanna make sure I get it like really in there into the lashes and really close. So I'm kind of doing like little like baby strokes, like pushing this liner into the lash line. And then I'm gonna take a pencil brush and kind of like work it into the lash line more. I'm not trying to like pull it down at all. I'm just trying to like work it into the lash line so it's really diffused in the lash line and it looks smoky in that sense rather than like in a blown out sense because it's not really like a blown out smoky liner. It's just kind of like a nice smudged liner. So again, as I work, I'm just I'm smudging it into the lower lash line, not getting it on the water line and not pulling it, not really trying to pull it down. I'm thinking about it and I'm sure that Swell and Crandall would have had like the eyeliner that has like that little rubber smudgy on the other side. I'm sure that's what she would have used. I don't even have one of those anymore. Comment below and let me know, do any of your liners have the little rubber smudgy on them still? I don't have any that have the rubber smudgy. I loved the rubber smudgy back in the day. It was like my favorite tool, I think. All right, I'm gonna brush out my lash extensions. And then I'm gonna go in and set my under eye concealer with just a little bit of powder. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish, Flawless Finish Powder. That's always such a mouthful for me to say. I just wanna do this step before I put on any lower lash mascara because I don't like to disturb the lower lash line again after I have my mascara on. I'm just gonna put a touch of lower lash mascara and I'm kinda of gonna sweep it towards the outer corner rather than going like straight down, which was my normal instinct. Um, because again, that's definitely the look that we're seeing in this 1991 classic. All right, now moving on to what is probably gonna be my favorite part. We're gonna finish off the complexion. I'm gonna take um, a big flat powder brush and I'm going to lightly powder the rest of my face. Again, I want my skin to be more of like a satin finish. Again, just because that is kind of the way it was in the early 90s. I don't think there was like a lot of dewy skin looks going on. All right, so now going into blush, I found this like awesome Tawny Rose. This is Creation from Mineral Fusion. I got this off of Amazon and I am, oh my gosh, I'm just so excited because when I swatched it, it is like, the perfect 90s shade. Um, I'm definitely gonna be not doing my normal blush placement. So her blush is pretty much like the apples and it's definitely draped. That was a big thing in the late 80s and early 90s was to drape your blush, which is actually a technique I kind of love. It's basically like using your blush, like draping it down, um, almost where you would put like a contour shade on your cheek. So I'm actually kind of excited about that. So again, gonna start like, more on the apple and then kind of going back and pulling down to kind of get more of like a draping effect. Oh my gosh, I'm like really excited about the blush. Blush was really big back then and blush is really big here in my home. 
um, with me. Not No one else really cares about blush in my house but me. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love that 90s blush placement so much. This blush has me so happy. Um, it also looks like there's a little bit going on here, like on the temples and up along the hairline, which kind of makes me, again, really happy because that is right up my alley. I don't think bronzer was really a thing in the late 80s and early 90s, but she definitely has like some color here on the forehead and it really looks to be like a similar tone to the blush. So that's why I'm using the blush up here because it looks like that's what is going on. I'm also gonna put like a touch on my nose because her nose definitely has some color to it. And again, it looks really close to the cheeks. I feel like, yeah, taking the blush across the nose, I feel like that's definitely would have been a 1991 move for sure. I feel like I'm just a little too glowy right here. So I'm just putting a little bit of powder down to kind of tamp down my glow just a touch. And then we're gonna finish off with lips and then my Sewell and Crandall look will be complete except for my outfit, which I'm so excited about. So I searched and searched for the perfect lip. The lip that she has is like a rusty, like terracotta, but like still has a touch of rose in it. And so the closest lipstick I could find is this one from Makeup Forever. It is 108 Striking Spice. I think it's really gonna, I think it's really gonna match. So moment of truth here. This is almost there. I think it needs to be just a touch darker. So I'm gonna take like a like rose brown. This is Pigale from NARS. I'm gonna add that in there. I just took my concealer brush and kind of like cleaned up my Cupid's bow because Christina Applegate always has that really awesome like V Cupid's bow going on. I feel like this is the perfect color. I feel as though I am ready to transform into Swelling Crandall. So now we just need to get me a really awesome early 90s Swelling Crandall like business outfit going on, complete with shoulder pads and crazy earrings. Let's do it. This is gonna sound weird, but I'm honestly not sure I have ever been so proud of myself in my entire life. <laughs> All right, so I found this really awesome like black and white print uh, bodysuit on Amazon and I couldn't find the exact evil eye one that Suellen has on but I thought this was pretty close it gives the same effect and then this awesome white trim blazer with like the shoulder pads and everything that looks like it came straight out of working girl I found this at a thrift store uh, so yeah that's pretty awesome <laughs> I'm so happy right now I don't know why this outfit is making me so happy but honestly I am so happy this is so much fun this is what Halloween should be it should be fun so I have two earring options I couldn't find the exact ones that Sue Ellen wears. I mean, I searched and searched. I literally spent like an hour on Amazon looking and then realized, okay, it's not gonna happen. Uh, so I have two different options and I'm just gonna look at both and see what I think is more Sue Ellen-esque. I don't know, I feel like this is definitely bigger and therefore more like recognizable. Although this one has like the half moon thing going on, but I think these bigger ones are better because yeah, it's 1991, bigger is better. And I'm done. I'm, again, I don't think I've ever been this proud of a Halloween costume in my entire life. I love this so much. I feel like I look like her. I think I accomplished what I came here to do. I'm, I'm genuinely very proud of myself. I have nothing left to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun recreating Sue Ellen Crandall's just iconic interview look. Let me know in the comments below, what are you gonna dress up for as Halloween? And let me know, have you seen this movie? It's honestly like one of my very favorite movies of all time. I love this movie so much. So I would love to know how many of y'all have seen it. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, you stay on top of that, Rose. Talks like she's chewing her face. <laughs>